Hi, this is another video about MATLAB App Designer. In this video, I will show you how to set up a startup function, how to create interaction between different buttons, and also how to create a variable that is accessible by different functions within your app. Now, in order to demonstrate this, I have created a stopwatch, as you can see here. Now, as you can see, in this text field, I have already placed a, a string with these numbers. So this is done using a startup function. So I will show you how to do this one. Now, when I click on start, you notice that, um, of course, the time is start to counting. But um, something else you notice is that the start button is now disabled. This is a very useful feature. Uh, because sometimes you have a program that is heavy, uh, it operates for a very long time, and you don't want user to click on that button multiple times. Because when the first run is finished, then the program will start to run again, and this is not convenient. So you want to actually disable this and uh, don't permit the user to, by mistake, click it multiple times. Now when I click on stop, you notice that the name of these buttons changes. And of course, if I click reset, everything will reset. And if I click start again, everything starts. Stop or continue, it continues. Basically, there is a kind of interaction between these buttons. We will learn how to do that. Now, in this video, I will not show you exactly how to make the stopwatch, but I will show you how to create these features. Maybe in another video, if some of you are interested, I can show you how to create this stopwatch also. All right, so let us start making this. Uh, features. So I create a new program, a new app. Um, I put this edit field here and two buttons. Maybe I remove the name here. I call this one start and I call name this one stop. Okay, so I enlarge it a bit. All right, so now I already have um, a kind of shape for my program. Okay, maybe something like this. And I can resize this one to make it more nice. You can assign some different colors to this. This is uh, not the blue, this is maybe green. And I also don't want to, I don't want to be able to resize it. Okay. So we have created the graphical um, shape of this program. Now, let me I save it first. Okay. So if I launch this right now, Obviously, we see that there is no text here, so I need to add that um, initial text inside inside this text field. So basically, we click on code view, and we click on app. Uh, should I zoom in on this? How can I zoom in? Yes, we click on here, and then ah, now this zoom in it doesn't work very well. So then we click on app.ui figure, so the name of this app. And then from this one, we, we select callback. And then here we have a startup function. So we should click on this arrow and basically select add a startup function. So now a startup function is added to your code. So what we want is basically whenever we launch this program, this startup function operates. And what we want is that that text should appear here. So basically, I can say app.editField.value should be equal to that. Um, what is this? Should be equal to 0, 0 to that font. Also, I want to have a, a little bit larger font. So basically, dot font size so we can select font size and then maybe the font is 40. so now if i run it you see obviously that uh, basically we have that text here um, which is as we want 
So now we have learned how to work with the startup function. Now what I want to do is that whenever I click on this start button, I want the, the button be disabled. So I create two callbacks for the start, fun start button and stop button. So this is for start button and this is for stop button. Okay, so let's say if I click on the start button, I want to disable that. What I can do is that I can basically set so app dot start um, start button app dot start button and then we put comma we, we write enable so we want to actually make it off so now if I uh, basically if I save this so you notice that when I click on the start nothing happens so I, I should run it So if I click on the start button, you notice that the start button will be disabled. Basically, this is the this is the way to do this. Now, of course, now I can do nothing. Um, maybe in your real program, you have a function here, something that will will operate. Let's say do you have some function here? I put a pause of three seconds, and then I want to enable this. Obviously, I can do something like this at the end of the. At the end of that um, operation so in this case basically user will click on start button and the start button will be disabled the function will operate whatever that it takes and then at the end it would enable it again in this case what I want to do is that um, I don't want to enable it by that button or because for us it's a stopwatch maybe it never stops we ha the user has to stop it so I do not want to use this um, these few commands here. I just want to uh, maybe enable it using the other button. So whenever the other button is pressed, basically um, this will be enabled. So we can see that I can click on the start. This will be uh, will be disabled. Now if I click on stop, that will be enabled. So this is good. So now how can I change the name of these things? Um, so let's say whenever I click on the stop, if I click on the start, um, okay, so then for example, the stopwatch starts to count. And now if I click on the stop, I want the name to change. Uh, so first I detect that this start button is actually disabled. So let us first detect that one. Um, so I don't want to enable it right away. Basically, what I want is that I want to write an if function. So if and end. So what do I want to do? str. So I want to compare. What do I want to compare? I want to compare app dot start button and dot enable. Okay. So this, the status of the of this uh, button, we want to see whether it's off or not. If it is off, then I want to do something. So if that one is off, um, if this one is off, when I click on the stop one, I want the name of the stop to change. Mm. So in this case, I should say app dot stop button, and then we call it text so we want to change the name so this one should be uh, restart restart okay so in case the start button is disabled when i click on the stop button first of all uh, the name of the of the stop button becomes restart uh, do you want to restart it or do you want to continue? And so the name of the start button becomes continue. So here, for example, I say start button. Then this one is, for example, continue. All right. So let's say, let's see what happens if I run this. So this one. 
to save us and then it it gives some error here um app dot okay the name is star star this should be the spelling was wrong so when you click on this and then click on here then you see that the name will change all right but then when i click on restart i want the restart button to become stop again okay so how can i do that then so i can actually write another comparison um maybe i should put this one this should be actually here okay yes so now i can make a comparison maybe i can copy this and then and so if the this one should be app dot uh, stop button dot text if uh, this one is basically restart if this one is restart then what we do we basically change the name app dot stop button dot text we we put this one equal to stop and of course this one should be let me put this semicolons I can put this one before that because okay so basically now what we have if if the name of this is restart then it changes the name to to stop let's see what we have right now uh, maybe this one should go here all right so now i zoom in on this so i click on restart okay then i click on stop the name will change now if i click on restart um, then it stops and the name of the start should be okay so here we have basically to add this one to start should be a start so we change basically the name of both of them i think this will be good So we click on the start, we click on the stop, and then the name will change. Now, if I click on start, I also want the name of these to be, uh, to change to become restart. We should also have this one here. Okay. So I think now, whenever we click on that, that becomes restart. So we click on this, that is restart. Now, if I click on that, it's either continue, and if I click on this, it would stop. Okay, so we have learned how to basically create interaction between different buttons. Now, let's say you want, uh, whenever I click on the first button, I want basically one parameter that we have to increase by five unit. And whenever I click on the second button, I want that parameter to increase by three units. So basically, I want this parameter to be accessible from both of these start and stop function, um, functions. So what we have to do, you click on property, and basically um, a box opens here so you just put your parameter let's say i have parameter a a is equal zero at the uh, so i define it zero but then whenever i click on the stop function i want to have you how you refer to a you should write app.a and this one for example is app.a plus five so we add it by five unit and i can also show app.a now if i click on the stop function so app.a is equal app.a plus three units and i can also show the app the the variable okay so let us see what we get um, 
So now here we have, maybe I just clear this. So if I click on start, you can notice that the um, parameter is five because it was originally zero. Now five unit is added. So if I click on restart, it will be added by three. If I click on restart again, it adds again by three. If I click on here, adds again by three. If I click on start, adds by five and so on. So basically, uh, the parameter is now accessible by both of these uh, functions. So this is how you define the parameter uh, from properties. And then later on, when you want to call it, you should write app dot that parameter. And then it's accessible by all of these functions. All right, so that's it for this video. Maybe see you in the next video. Bye.